In my opinion, Adobe Fresco is the number one drawing app. And in this video, I'm gonna break down why I think you should give it a try if you wanna take your illustration game to the next level. I'm Leia, also known as Low and Flow, and I've built a full-time illustration career working with brands all over the world. I create really detailed line art drawings that are entirely vector using Adobe Fresco. Alrighty, get caffeinated and situated and enjoy the video. Now, at one point, I was using Procreate for all of my illustration work. And don't get me wrong, it is a cool app, and I really understand why people love it. But if you're serious about making illustration a professional career, hear me out on why Adobe Fresco might be the better choice for you. While I was using Procreate for my drawing work, I just ran into the same pain point over and over again. The struggle and the painful process of trying to vectorize my artwork. Now, for some people, their artwork is really simple and they don't mind drawing in like raster and pixel brushes and then using image trace tools later to vectorize their work. But I could just never get this to work for me. My artwork is really detailed and complex, and I always just felt like I had to sacrifice my artistic style in order to get vector files, which are really important for printing and product applications. And that's a huge part of what I do in my job. And if you're completely new to digital art, let me just back up a little bit and explain what all this raster vector nonsense is. There is raster art that is created using pixels. Any given image has a certain amount of pixels and the higher the pixels, the higher the quality of that image. But if you zoom in on the image or you try to scale it to be larger, you'll notice that it becomes really pixelated and looks like junk. Vector art, on the other hand, is created using points and math. And if your artist's brain just checked out when I said the word math, just just hang in there, <laughs> stay with me. Basically, vector images are infinitely scalable, so no matter what size artboard you use to draw, you could scale it down to something as small as a business card or blow it up huge on a billboard or the side of a building. So basically, it's infinitely scalable without compromising the quality of the image. And if you're watching this, you might be somebody who's still using Procreate and then going into a software like Adobe Illustrator after to image trace your work to get it into a vector format. And if this process works for you, awesome. For me, I found it really frustrating and unintuitive. My goal is for the process to feel as artistic as possible. So I wanna be doing 99% of my work with a pencil in my hand, actually drawing. I don't mind doing design stuff on the computer, like I love creating repeating patterns and you know, adding text and just a little bit of flair using Adobe Illustrator afterwards, but for my drawing work, I just wanna draw. <laughs> and what I'm drawing, I want it to remain what it looks like when I hand drew it. Adobe Fresco has built-in vector brushes, so you're gonna hand draw everything like you normally would, except for its vector from the outset. And this is an absolute game changer. And these brushes feel natural like any other pen or pencil in another drawing app. In fact, I think they're better. <laughs> and for me personally, in my artwork, the line art is the star of the show. It's what I'm the best at and it's what I really like to highlight in all of my pieces. So my inking and line art brush are really important to me and I've nailed down the perfect brush settings to get just the nicest, smoothest, crispiest lines. In the vector brush library, I just started with the default round brush and I adjusted the settings to add some taper. And I like to jack the smoothing all the way up because I like to have really smooth and clean lines. If you're somebody who likes a lot more of an organic, kind of like jittery feel, then you can just turn the smoothing down. And people always bring up the delay and the lag in my pen. Seriously, it's just the smoothing. If you don't like that, you can just turn the smoothing down a little bit and it won't be that way. I personally don't mind it at all. It really like slows down my stroke and makes it extra accurate. But if you don't like that, just turn your smoothing down and stop yelling at me. Okay, so aside from vector art being really versatile and great for printing and product applications, I also just really love the process of using vector brushes for drawing. Because you can zoom in so far without pixelation or losing quality, you can get really precise and detailed which is just something that I couldn't do using raster brushes. I see you guys using your pixel brushes and your videos and like, I really don't know, I don't know how you do it. To me, it looks like you have glasses on that are just like super dirty and your whole image that you're looking at is blurry. Like, I don't even know how you can, I don't know how you function. There's no way that I could go back. And I think if you tried it out, if you haven't yet, 
you might not go back either. <laughs> and by the way, Adobe Fresco does have really rad raster brushes too. It's everything in one app. It's not just a vector software. In fact, they have a lot more raster brushes. My favorite is the sketching brushes. I love to start every drawing with a rough sketch concept. And I really like the default pencil brush that comes in Adobe Fresco. It just feels super natural. Love starting all of my pieces with a really loose, low pressure sketch to just to get things going. And I want it to feel as close to a pencil as possible. And that is what I found with that brush. I also love the live brushes, which feel really close to traditional art. I personally have been loving the watercolor brush and the smudging tools to create depth and shadows and fun elements in my lo-fi, low in the flow animations. <clears throat> Shameless plug. I have a YouTube channel called Lo-Fi Low and the Flow where I create really cool worlds that you can escape to that are one hour lo-fi tracks with really cool animations. Just in case you want to chill the heck out, you can listen to it while you're drawing, cleaning the house, working, doing emails, studying, trying to go to sleep, whatever it might be. Check it out. Okay, and a tool that I could not live without is vector trimming. You see the little circle? floating around your screen, that's the touch shortcut. And if you use Adobe Fresco and you don't know what it does, you might be like, why the heck is this thing here? And how can I get it to go away? It's so annoying and in the way all the time. That's what I once thought as well. But if you know how to use it, this little tool is actually a freaking powerhouse. One of my favorite tools of all time can be accessed using the touch shortcut. When you have a vector brush selected, you can go to the touch shortcut and tap it twice until the perimeter has a blue ring. And then you are now using the trim segments tool, which allows you to trim intersecting lines. So if you have two lines that cross one another and you want to just like Fruit Ninja slice away the excess, that is what this tool is used for, which is just a game changer. I know I've said the word game changer too many times already and I apologize. Sometimes when you want to get a really long, precise, smooth line, you just want to pull that line beyond where you're going. Couple notes about this tool, you can't use it on one line segment. So say you have one line and it goes and then crosses its own path. It views that as being like one segment. So it'll slice away the whole thing. It has to be two separate lines coming together. Another thing is that it can't be two lines coming together using the symmetry tool. So if you turn on symmetry, which is also another great tool, basically when you're using the symmetry tool and you cross two lines in the center together and you try to do the same thing, it takes the whole thing away. So it must consider it one segment. Anyways, would be really rad if we'd be able to do that. Another thing is if you have a bunch of lines that you need to trim, but somewhere within your line work, you filled an area and then you go in and try to trim those segments, it's going to trim the whole thing away because when you filled an area, it turned all of that into one segment. So just a pro tip, make sure that you trim all your segments before you fill in any of those areas. So next up, another tool that I really love is the set as reference tool. I set my line art layer as a reference and then I use the layers below it to fill in my flat fill colors for my drawing while keeping all of them on their own layer. For client work and things like t-shirt designs, I really need my final art to all be separated by color and this makes it super easy. When you go to fill color, it'll ask you if you want to fill it using vector or pixel. Go ahead and select vector if you'd like to keep your whole design vector. Might as well keep the whole dang thing high quality. You can only fill areas that are enclosed. So imagine it like a cup of paint. If there is a hole in the cup and there is a leak, your paint ain't gonna stay. It's the same way with this. You can only fill areas from your line art reference that are enclosed with lines. Really hope I'm explaining this right. If there are areas that you want to fill with color that aren't enclosed, all you need to do is go to your line art layer and hit release reference. Go back to your layers that have the colors on them and you can just use the lasso tool to select any area that you want to fill in with a color or you can just take your pen and simply fill it in with whatever color. Another hack related to color is that if you upload a photo into Adobe Fresco, it will automatically create you a color palette based on that image. So let's say you have a screenshot of a color palette that you wanna use, just upload it right in and it'll automatically make you a color palette where you already select your colors. This is also really nice if you just wanna use the same colors you did in a previous drawing. I'll just upload a photo of my drawing and the color palette shows up and you can go ahead and delete the image 
right away and the color palette will stay. Next reason Adobe Fresco is the bomb is that it seamlessly connects to other Adobe applications. So if you're a creative, you're probably already using other Adobe platforms. You're probably using Adobe Illustrator and it's super easy to export your drawing as a PSD and then open it up in Illustrator and all of your vector layers are intact so you can make any final touches. I like to take it into Illustrator to add any text or change any colors last minute and that's where I go ahead and export it into as many file types as I need. I'll export my drawing as a PSD, a PDF, an AI, an SVG, a PNG, a JPEG, everything that I could possibly need for me or for my clients. Another feature that I just discovered that actually saved my life. Okay, that's a little dramatic, but it definitely brought me back from a full-blown panic attack. So. Adobe Fresco automatically saves your work anytime that you hit back and go to the Adobe Fresco home screen. Basically, anytime you like exit your drawing. I was working kind of fast and I used the trim segments tool and I accidentally trimmed away all of my line work. It was gone. I had spent hours on it at this point. It had never actually happened to me before, surprisingly. So I had never gone looking for a solution. Pretty quickly, I realized that there is a version history option in Adobe Fresco, which is Amazing. Thank God. <laughs> so I went and I selected version history and it has in there all the different timestamps of when your drawing had saved. So I just went back a couple minutes to the most recent save and everything was intact. So when I reverted my drawing back to the most recent timestamp, it just created me a copy of it at that timestamp and then the original one that I messed up was still there as well. So I could see that being super useful, making sure that you have copies of it at different timestamps. I mean, imagine if you went really far into a drawing and you think, damn, this looked so much better three hours ago when I was using those other colors. You can just go back to that timestamp and have a whole nother version of it. You guys, you don't even understand how happy I am about this thing I discovered. Thank God that happened to me. Okay, so this just barely scratched the surface of why I love Adobe Fresco and use it for all of my illustration work. But I am looking forward to creating more videos and hopefully being of more value to you. I'm gonna be sharing my advice, making drawing tutorials, all the things. So if you have anything that you wanna see, feel free to leave me a suggestion. And if you liked this, you should subscribe. I'll also be responding to any and all comments, so feel free to say hello or ask me a question. I'd love to just chat and answer any questions any of you guys have. All right, cheers homies, Leia out.